Welcome, ladies. I'm your host, naturopath Jennifer Harrington, and today is an exciting day. Exciting for me, anyway. Today is my podcast's 100th episode, and I really want to thank you all for coming along on this ride with me. I especially want to thank all the wonderful women who have given me a five star rating and took the time to write a review. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's hard to believe I started this project in May 2019, and almost two and a half years later, I still have a long list of topics I want to cover and people I want to interview for the show. So I'll still be here for a while to come. If you are new to the show, please consider going back and listening to some of the earlier episodes. They don't need to be listened to in order, but I've previously covered so many topics like dietary suggestions, nutrients, supplements, herbs, symptoms, and general hormonal information. Today as we welcome in episode 100, it's time to take a walk down memory lane and see what the five most popular episodes have been in regards to downloads. Let's start the countdown. Today, in at number five, is the only interview in the countdown and the only male interview on the show so far. It was episode 63. Exercise is the ultimate medication with Colin Hoopla. What's really interesting is that as soon as I I recorded this episode, I knew it was going to be a hit and I actually predicted it would be a highly downloaded episode worth re-listening to time and again. I had so much fun with Colin and you can really hear the joy and the laughter from both of us. Colin explains the five W's of exercise. Why, when, what, where and with whom. If you are looking for motivation to start exercising or to step up your current routine, I promise you this interview will motivate you. This is definitely a must-listen-to episode, and not just once either. Put this one on rotation. Coming in at number four was episode 52, Hormonal Constipation. If you really like to age well, live well, and experience true health, you need to have an optimally functioning digestive system. And looking at the amount of downloads this episode received, I'd say there are many of you out there suffering with poor performing bowels. For the still menstruating perimenopausal woman, she might notice constipation leading up to her period, followed by a looser movement with her cycle. Lower estrogen levels in postmenopause can also cause drier, smaller, harder pellet-like movements. So if you are not having great movements, that kind of just glide out with no pushing or straining or waiting around for it to happen, this may be the episode for you. Coming in at number three is episode 84, Postmenopause Concerns. This episode has done exceptionally well, especially when you consider it is the most recently released out of the five episodes in the countdown. Postmenopause has the potential to be the longest phase of a woman's life. And for most women, it's the calm after the storm we know as perimenopause. But for some, it's still a struggle. And this episode suggests a few reasons why you might still be struggling after the event. Episode 84 also discusses health concerns that all women are at greater risk of developing in postmenopause, such as genitourinary syndrome and osteoporosis. Coming in at number two is episode two on hot flushes. I'm not surprised at all that this one made the list. It has got to be the most well-known symptom of menopause. Some women struggle with the frequency, some with the intensity, and some lucky women don't have these surges of heat interrupting their life at all. 
This episode discusses common underlying causes of hot flushes, such as narrowing of the thermoneutrazone. It also looks at common triggers, such as stress, coffee, alcohol, sugar and smoking. And like every episode on Menopause Natural Solutions, it wouldn't be complete without discussing possible natural solutions, including vitamins, minerals, herbs, lifestyle hacks and environmental factors that may be helpful in banishing hot flushes for good. And now we've made it to number one. Any ideas which one it'll be? The winner is episode 82, the most common dietary change to make in menopause. I'm frequently asked, where do I begin? All this information and potential changes can be overwhelming to some. If you just want to get started and don't know which change will bring you the most bang for your buck, it's this one dietary change. But that being said, it isn't an easy change to make. Sugar is the perfect toxin. It's sweet to taste and incredibly addictive. But if you want to reduce your menopausal symptoms and get prepared to age as well as you can, you need to be metabolically flexible. And in order for this to occur, sugar has got to go. But please don't even consider replacing it with artificial sweeteners. Well, that's it. We made it to the end. I hope you enjoyed the countdown. It was a different style of episode for me, but I wanted to do something different to mark this milestone. So if you haven't heard any of these episodes before or need a refresher, I recommend you go back and start here. Maybe even share them with a friend or two you feel might benefit from the information. And don't forget, if you do like my menopausal tips, can I encourage you to subscribe to my email list? This way we can keep in touch. Bye for now.